So this part here, this is called the revolving nose piece. It's able to turn, you're able to turn it. And on the revolving nose piece, you've got the different types of objectives. And in my case, I've got uh, five different objectives. The magnification of each objective um, is uh, written directly on the objective and it's also color coded. So over here, we've got the four times objective, 10 times magnification, 20 times magnification, 40 times magnification, and also 100 times magnification. And the magnification of the objective has to be multiplied with the magnification of the eyepiece uh, to give uh, the total magnification of the microscope currently in use. Um, you also notice that uh, with a 100 times objective, in my case, we've got uh, oil written on here. And this indicates uh, that it's an oil immersion objective and it has to be used in conjunction with immersion oil, um, which I'm going to explain in a different episode. So you also see that over here, each objective has a, a rubber grip. And the reason is that uh, it's easier for the objective to be um, unscrewed and unmounted. Um, you should always make sure that it's uh, completely turned in. Um, and uh, generally you should not really um, unmount the objective unless there's a good reason. Because every time when you remove the objective, there's the danger of uh, dust being introduced into the optical system. Another thing that I would like to indicate here is the following. Um, you, you see um, the front part is able to retract here. Uh, this objective is spring-loaded and this means that uh, if somebody makes a mistake and actually uh, rotates the stage too uh, far up, upwards, and if there's contact with the objective um, so that the objective doesn't break and the specimen does not break, um, the, objective will, uh, the front part of the objective will retract. Um, notice I'm not really touching the, lens, the front lens part, but only here at the side, so that should be okay. But generally, it's also not something that you normally want to, uh, want to touch. So again, the revolving nose piece over here uh, with, in my case, uh, four different objectives. Um, and you notice, of course, that the objectives are all uh, or, um, arranged in an ascending order, because as you switch magnification, of course, you want to turn over um, from objective to objective and not uh, want to skip a, a few of those. So it's important that they are arranged in uh, ascending order. Over here, towards the right side of the microscope, we have at the very top the main switch. Over here, the light intensity regulator, a dimmer. And down here we have the two focus knobs. The coarse focus knob raises and lowers the stage very quickly and the fine focus knob. I'm going to talk about those two later. But first of all, I want to lose a couple of words uh, and talk about uh, switching the microscope on and off. When you switch the microscope on, always make sure that uh, you first uh, turn the, dim the dimmer all the way down to um, a low light intensity. Then you turn on the main switch and you're going to see over here that the light still does not burn yet. And then you slowly start to turn up the light intensity and when you switch the microscope off, you reduce the light intensity first and then you switch off the main switch. Why is it important to follow this uh, sequence? Um, if, you turn off the light on, if you turn off the light intensity first and then you uh, turn on the main switch like, like this, then the light will start to come up on very quickly and uh, this, will give, uh, this will heat up the light very quickly. And when you turn it off immediately, then it will basically uh, turn off the light bulb very quickly and this uh, very quick uh, change in temperature uh, reduces the lifespan of the light bulb. So it's always a better, it's always much better to first, uh, uh, when you turn, uh, first uh, lower the light intensity and then you switch it off, okay? Um, down here we have the coarse focus adjustment knob, which raises and lowers the stage very quickly and the fine focus adjustment knob, which also raises and lowers the stage, but however, in very, very, uh, small steps and you're not able to visually see that. It's very important that you do never use the coarse focus knob with a high uh, power objective in place. The reason is uh, obviously it's because there's the danger of actually crashing the objective um, into the specimen. Um, but there's no danger of actually doing that when you uh, use the low power objective. So you first focus using the coarse knob, and then you rotate to higher power, and then you only use the fine focus adjustment knob. And this way you're going to be safe. So um, let's turn on the microscope a little bit. I'm going to raise the stage again, turn it all the way down, switch it on, slowly turn up the light intensity, and you're going to see 
down here in the illumination system, the light beam, and my microscope over here has a so-called Köhler illumination. And uh, this illumination system includes a diaphragm also over the light source. And by turning the, uh, the ring over here, you're actually um, opening and closing the diaphragm. And this way you're able to uh, adjust the width of the light beam. Why is this important? Uh, this way you're actually only, you're only illuminating the part of the specimen that you're actually looking at. So the, uh, by, otherwise if you open it all the way there's a lot of stray light uh, which decreases the image quality, decreases contrast and uh, uh, if you take photographs with a, with a microscope uh, the, uh, the picture is going to look a little bit washed out. So you're, you probably want to adjust it in such a way that you're only illuminating the part that you actually looked, that you're really looking at. So, this was one uh, diaphragm and now we're going to have a look at the second diaphragm which is located beneath the stage which is uh, the, the condenser aperture diaphragm. So, down here beneath the stage we have another um, optical system this is the so-called condenser and uh, integrated into the condenser we have uh, the so-called condenser aperture diaphragm which can be controlled using this horizontal lever over here and the condenser aperture diaphragm is important for regulating contrast and resolution and uh, normally what you should do is the following you should adjust the value of, uh, of the setting of the aperture diaphragm uh, according to the value of uh, the corresponding objective. Each objective has a certain uh, aperture value in, written on it and this value is the value with optimum resolution and it should also be set here. Uh, but uh, usually people are not go just going to leave it uh, on one place but you're actually going to work with it by moving it left and right and this way you can um, adjust uh, both contrast um, and also resolution. And what I'm going to do now is the following. We're going to, ha we're going to have a look at this uh, condenser aperture diaphragm, but first of all I have to remove, uh, I have to remove the condenser a little bit. So I'm going to raise the stage. Over here on the side I'm going to turn this knob and I'm going to lower the whole condenser system. It should normally always be uh, towards the top. Over here I've got a little screw. I'm going to loosen the screw. And I can now slide it down and I see I'm a little bit too far too low, so I can remove it, move it up again and I can remove the whole condenser system with the filter holder. Okay, so and we're going to have a look at this right now. So here in front of us now is the whole condenser system with our aperture diaphragm. On the side here left and right you see two screws and uh, these are the so-called centering screws and you're able to center the condenser um, in such a way that the light beam is centered by turning these screws. Usually you only have to do this adjustment once. And now let's have a look, look at the diaphragm. I'm going to turn around the condenser all the way to the top and over here you can see it looks a little bit bluish. The reason is there is an integrated blue filter and if I move the horizontal lever left and right you, you can see the diaphragm opening and closing. And what I'm going to do now is the following. I'm going to remove the filter holder Got to be a little bit careful because there's a blue filter included. I'm going to remove the filter holder. Here is the blue filter. Got to be careful with that. Here we see a lens, an optical system. Okay, you can see this a little bit. Where if I hold my finger behind it, you should be able to see that it actually. Yeah, there's a lens here. Um, there's another lens over here, and over here you can again see the diaphragm. Now, why is there a blue filter included? Uh, the reason is that the microscope light uh, is, has a somewhat reddish tint, especially as the lamp gets older, it becomes more and more red. Um, so this uh, blue filter compensates uh, this color drift a little bit. Um, alternatively, it's, or in conjunction with a blue filter, you can also um, put a so-called uh, dark fill patch stop into here. And uh, this uh, filter will now um, 
invert uh, the not invert but essentially it will be like this that uh, the main um, objects uh, will appear bright on a dark background so it's not a, a, a completely negative image but it's a, uh, an optical contrasting method which is sometimes very useful for observing very fine uh, fine details on the microscope so essentially the point I'm showing you this is that this is also the place where you can uh, put several filters in where you can put several filters in so um, I'm going to put the whole thing together again. I'm going to put, in this case, I'm going to put the patch stop in. I'm going to carefully put the filter holder onto the condenser, and then I'm going to install the whole thing again in the microscope. 